In the mid-22nd century, a brutal war rages. The fledgling United Earth fights for its very survival against the enigmatic and aggressive Romulan Star Empire. Although Romulan victory is far from certain, the Durdex being denied his ultimate objective of Earth, Admiral Black fighting a ferocious defense of his homeworld, nevertheless, the war is far from over. The Romulans now hold a great swathe of human space and its people at their mercy. The raptors' talons remain deep set into the flesh of human territory. Admiral Archer now faces the daunting task of dislodging his soul-wrought foe to lift the shadow of Romulan domination. The war has only just begun. had been saved from Romulan clutches, humanity had nonetheless found itself on the back foot. Starfleet had exhausted itself, both in terms of morale and material, defending Earth, and in September had little means of launching an offensive. For Admiral Archer, there was no question, the war must go on until the Romulans had been entirely driven from human space. Unfortunately, by September, of 2156, Starfleet Command was firmly of the opinion that if an offensive were to be taken, on any front it should be against D. Durdex, who had lost much of his fleet at Earth. However, it would be a long time before such an offensive was possible. Further delays would ensue when on September 24th, Starfleet received a message from the Romulan commander offering to negotiate a ceasefire. Starfleet Command accepted this offer, naively believing that the Romulans were embarking on these negotiations from a position of good faith. In reality, the Durdex used this respite to recover and reinforce at Tau Ceti. The negotiations dragged into November 6th when they finally fell through after it became clear that the Romulans had no intentions of giving up their captured systems. Therefore, Starfleet Command authorized continued offensive action against the Romulans, allowing Archer to continue his offensive against Kassara, and ordering a new task force under Captain Hernandez to begin an offensive against the Durdex. Archer was the first to reach his objective, arriving at Denver with a fleet of 15 ships consisting of Enterprise and Intrepid, seven Daedalus frigates and three Freedom Class destroyers. By no means a new ship, seeing primary service in the 2140s as Earth's first Warp 4 capable class, yet it only saw limited production before Earth transitioned to the newer Intrepid and eventually NX class. The Freedom Class has a length of 137 meters, a width of 68 meters, and a draft of 35 meters. It is a small ship spanned by only three decks, with a modest crew of 68. It has only light armaments consisting of three pulse cannons and a torpedo launcher, although they were later augmented with phase cannons. The true strength of the Freedom Class lies in its performance. During its early career, it achieved speeds of up to warp 4.5 with impressive acceleration, and at sublight proved extremely quick and agile. For this reason, Starfleet Command had elected to continue this class during the war, utilizing it as a reconnaissance and defense picket vessel, it easily outmatching the Romulan sparrows that had hitherto been the bane of Starfleet formations. Archer was also supported by an Andorian squadron under the command of Brigadier Shran, composed of two Kamari heavy cruisers and a Lakshimi-class heavy destroyer. Archer arrived at Denver on December 1st, 2156. Initially, the system appeared totally abandoned. There was no sign of Kazara. Nonetheless, 
Archer advanced cautiously, spreading his fleet in a search formation, Brigadier Shran holding the starboard flank. As Shran's squadron passed the moon of Denver 7, the IGS Kamal unexpectedly struck a mine. Suddenly, Kasara sprung into action, enacting his trap. Having deployed his fleet in a honeycomb formation, he was able to cover a large area with relatively few ships. These small pods of three were each deployed around strategically placed mine clusters before powering down, thus hiding themselves from enemy sensors at all but the closest of ranges. This tactic was known as Arania Telam, the spider's web. With Shran unable to advance lest he strike more mines and unable to retreat without abandoning the Kamal, he was a sitting duck for Amelius. Shran responded with a volley of torpedoes. Unfortunately, his destroyer escort found itself overwhelmed and outmatched by the small nimble sparrows. Archer moved to aid his ally, but himself struck a mine, causing another group of ships to power up. Archer was now himself surrounded. Fortunately for Archer, his squadron moved to support him, and soon Kasara found himself outnumbered and was forced to retreat under a barrage of missiles. Archer halted the fleet and organized a new plan to counteract Kasara's tactics. He sent forward his freedoms and the Neara to scan for enemy mine clusters from which they could estimate Kasara's position. After completing a six hour sweep, the reconnaissance squadron reported that the Romulans were likely outnumbered and as such Archer was able to plan his own trap. Upon detecting the detonation of his mine cluster, Amelius powered up only to find himself surrounded. Yet he was undeterred and fired a desperate volley of missiles, not at the enemy, but at the mine clusters of his allies, hoping to get their attention. Kasara, detecting the detonations, wasted no time in powering up. As he did, he soon realized that he had been trapped, being engaged simultaneously by Archer and Shran, allowing Ramirez to close in on Amelius. Even then, Amelius fought stubbornly, his Tyrannus heavy cruiser taking hits that would have been fatal for most before succumbing. Suddenly, Kassara now faced both Ramirez and Archer, his support cut off. Kassara still fought hard and in a last act of defiance detonated his reactor, which caught the Colorado in its blast, destroying it. The two remaining Romulan ships attempted to flee, but were pursued and destroyed by the Freedom Squadron. On December 5th, Captain Hernandez arrived in the Tau Ceti system, but was met with stiff resistance, with attack after attack being repelled. On December 8th, Columbia led an ill-fated attack. In the confusion, she disappeared and was later stated to be lost in action as no wreckage was ever found. From December 5th to December 12th, Starfleet lost a total of 11 ships attempting to retake Tau Ceti, all of which came to naught. The Duradex was going nowhere. On December 20th, Archer received news of Tau Ceti. Hernandez and Archer had been long-time friends, and her death was a blow to Archer. Indeed, Starfleet was a close-knit organization. Nearly everyone had lost a friend or colleague at Tau Ceti. The Dirdex did not learn of the events of Denever until December 24th, at which point he realized how vulnerable he was. All Archer would have to do was turn and capture Calder, and he would be, have been completely cut off and surrounded. Fortunately, with Starfleet morale so low, they let the opportunity slip, and the Dirdex escaped to Calder. When the fleet took Tal Seti on the 25th, they knew it was a hollow victory. Meanwhile, Archer now faced a new enemy, the once disgraced Commander Valdor, who now had a chance at redemption, a chance he would not let slip. At the start of 2257, the only consolation was the reopening of supply lines to Tela Prime, supplies that were unfortunately desperately needed 
In the first months of 2157, the Romulans began fortifying their positions, with each fleet consisting of 18 ships supported with minefields, detection grids, and fighters. After securing their position at Tau Ceti and Denever, Starfleet began planning a new phase of offensives. However, the previous offensives had made it abundantly clear that should they do so, they would require more ships and a new tactical approach. This approach was pioneered jointly by Major Balthazar Edison of Mako Command and Commander Malcolm Reed of Starfleet. The new tactics were based around the idea of aggressive reconnaissance. To be composed of two waves, the first wave would be composed of lighter ships that would probe and engage enemy defences. The second wave, consisting of larger, heavier ships, would then punch through the weak spot. Unfortunately, this tactic only proved partially effective during the offences of February and April, and proved costly. The Romulans used a combination of flexible defence and concave minefields to draw Starfleet cruisers into kill zones, as well as using the Tavaro to outflank the enemy. During this period, Starfleet lost a total of 27 ships. It was clear to Archer that nothing short of a mass assault would dislodge the Romulan positions. Starfleet Command was reluctant to authorise such an assault, as it would leave their own defences perilously thin. Archer spent the next three months building his forces, massing a fleet of 40 ships split between Denever and Tau Ceti. On July 20th, he launched his offensive, codenamed Operation Zhukov. A combined fleet of 40 ships from Tau Ceti and Denever converged on the Dirdex in the Calva system. If they successfully defeated him, the fleet would then turn to attack Valdor in the Tarod system, who would also face an attack by Commander Shran. It was a bold strategy, and if successfully implemented, would bring an end to the war by September. Unfortunately, this was not to be. Despite his numerical advantage, Archer was soon bogged down in the Calder system, the Duradex continually retreating into deeper and increasingly complex layered defences, all the while inflicting casualties on Archer. After days of fighting, the Duradex pulled out of Calder, having only lost six ships in the battle. Meanwhile, Archer's grand encirclement plan was shattered when Valdor counterattacked against Denever on the 30th of July. Realising Archer had left it under strength, attacking with a raiding squadron of five ships. Shran and the local defence ships eventually drove him off, but not before he destroyed a large amount of the supply depots, putting pain to any further offensives in the near future. Eventually, on September 9th, Earth retook Tarot, Valdor only giving token resistance before retreating. After two years of occupation, all of human space had been retaken. Many believed the war would finally end, with the Romulans being driven back behind their borders. But the Romulans had no intention of stopping. On December 7th, 2157, a series of raids were launched against outlying human Tellarite and Rigelian colonies, where the Romulans made use of their latest weapon, the U-28 Falcon. The Falcon, also known by Starfleet as Cracker, was the newest Romulan light frigate, intended to complement and support the Tavara. It had a length of 80 meters, a width of 98 meters, and a draft of 14 meters. With a crew of 120, its new engines allowed it to reach speeds of up to warp 5.6, matching the NX class. Its armament consists of two heavy disruptors and a new long-range hemlock torpedo launcher. As well as having good warp performance, it proved maneuverable at sublight and was seen as a viable replacement for the U-27 Sparrow. Archer argued that they could only win by taking the fight to the Romulans. Other members of coalition forces realised that they would be playing right into Romulan hands. As such, any plans for offensives were put on hold, while Starfleet undertook a retrofit programme to better counter Romulan tactics. 
These included a new sensor package issued to NX and Freedom Class vessels that would be able to detect enemy ships even when using sensor screens, although they would still be unable to secure a target lock. Photonic torpedoes and phase cannons were issued fleet-wide to improve firepower, although the Mark V torpedo remained Starfleet's weapon of choice. Several NX-class ships also received a secondary hull module, allowing for a more powerful engine and greater carrying capacity. A system of formalized supply and logistics was also introduced, with J-class freighters being used to carry additional fuel and ordnance. Starfleet now resembled less of a territorial defense force was a highly modern military organization to match the prestigious Andorian Imperial Guard, and by mid-2158, Starfleet felt confident enough to finally go on the offensive in a plan codenamed Operation Zulu. The goal of Operation Zulu was to engage and destroy the Romulan battle fleet at Algeron and Galandon Corps by using a series of staggered attacks from Tyrell, Calder and Tarot. The operation began on May 17th, 2158. Unfortunately, it faced immediate setbacks due to the more aggressive defence utilised by the Romulans. With the path to Galandon Corps and Algeron swarming with ever more Tavaros and Hawks, interdicting Starfleet's movements. Operation Zulu was therefore halted on January 2nd, 2159. A new plan was formulated, codenamed Operation Cossack, in which patrols of NXs and Freedoms would seek and destroy Romulan interdiction squadrons, clearing the way for an attack ahead of time. While it was successful, it took longer than expected. It wasn't until August 12th that they had secured the surrounding space, and even then, it was a precarious position, and their window of opportunity might close at any point. While most presumed to engage the Dirdex and Valdor, Archer offered a bold suggestion. Reconnaissance sorties and deep space probes indicated that the Romulans' entire front hinged around a single supply hub, the system of Cheron deep in Romulan space. Archer argued that if Cheron were destroyed, the Romulans would be cut off from their supplies and the entire front would collapse, perhaps bringing an end to the war. While many had reservations, it was a far more appealing prospect than continuing along the same path with no end in sight. Archer's plan was approved and it was codenamed Operation Odyssey. Archer gathered a fleet of 24 ships consisting of Enterprise, Excalibur, and Defiant, six Intrepids, five Freedoms, and eight Daedalus, and these were then supported by two J-class supply ships. Even so, it was fewer than Archer had hoped for. He asked the other Coalition members to join, but all refused. Thus, on the 1st of October, Operation Odyssey began, as Archer undertook the three-month voyage to Cheron. During this time, Starfleet launched a new series of offensives to distract the bulk of the Romulan fleet. These seemed successful. Unfortunately, in late November, Admiral Valdor received a report from the rear echelon patrol and he realized that the Starfleet offensive was but a fate and their true target was Cheron. And so he set off in desperate pursuit of Archer. Archer's fleet arrived at Cheron on the 3rd of January, 2160. He ordered a reconnaissance of the system and planned to attack on the 4th. The reports confirmed Archer's hopes. This was indeed the heart of the Romulan war effort. On the planet's surface was a starbase and numerous mines harvesting uranium, uranium and other war material. In orbit was a space station which seemed to serve as a fuel depot, as well as several orbital construction yards. Unfortunately, reconnaissance indicated there were as many as 40 ships in the system. It looked increasingly like a one-way voyage. Fortunately for Archer, the Romulan presence in the system was far less formidable than initially believed. The local commander was young and inexperienced, and had no reason to expect an attack. 
The few frontline caliber ships were under construction, and the majority of ships present were supply ships, heavily damaged cruisers, and now obsolete sparrows. As the human fleet entered the system, panic and confusion set in amongst the Romulan ranks, many believing that the front lines had been broken, and they attempted to flee the system, causing many a collision in the panic, and many ships were left isolated and destroyed by the Earth fleet. After the initial shock and confusion had passed, Commander Tal organized a defense. Unfortunately, he was only able to muster a handful of ships ready for combat, and many of these were still damaged. Nonetheless, he endeavored to hold off the humans for as long as possible. After several exchanges of torpedo volleys, Tal was driven back, losing two Tyrannus cruisers and his sparrows scattered by the Freedoms. Soon, a gap developed in his line, allowing Defiant to slip through and attack the shipyards. Fortunately, Valdor arrived to block his path, bringing with him 26 frontline ships, including 5 Tavaros, 10 Falcons, 4 Voronus, and 7 Sparrows. And the battle soon turned in the Romulans' favor. Archer was outnumbered, outgunned, and surrounded. Defeat loomed. Suddenly, Valdor pulled six ships from the front. This move surprised Archer, who quickly moved to exploit this opportunity, charging a gap in the formation and moving to the station, breaking out of the encirclement and forcing Valdor to fall back. Excalibur used this opportunity and led a squadron, attacking the flank of Valdor, pushing him away from the planet, leaving it open to bombardment. Yet no sooner had Excalibur opened fire than a Romulan patrol arrived in the system and now cut between Excalibur and the rest of the fleet. Meanwhile, Archer was halted in front of the station and was beginning to take casualties. Additionally, many of the ships under Tal had reorganized and turned back to reinforce Valdor. And when three of Valdor's splinter force returned, they looked to overwhelm Archer. However, this was not to be. Hot on the heels of the Splinter Force was a Coalition Armada, five Andorian warships, three Vulcan cruisers and six Tellarite vessels, led jointly by Commander Shran, Minister Saval, and the retired Admiral Graal. They had defied the wishes of their governments and flew to the support of Archer in one last effort. Outnumbered, the Romulans were now unable to stop the Coalition forces, the powerful Tyrannus cruisers outgunned by the Vulcans and Andorians. The Tellarite fought through and relieved Excalibur, and the station and dry docks and mines were one by one destroyed. Even so, Valdor fought on, even when all was lost. His ships were surrounded by the Coalition and offered the chance to surrender. His final transmission echoed, Glory to the Empire! before his ship was atomized by photonic torpedoes. The Battle of Charon was over, and soon after, so was the war. A war that had raged for five long years, and a war in which both humanity and the Romulan Empire had lost much. The war was traumatic for both peoples. A total of 144,000 died during the war. Humanity saw over 95,000 killed, and the Romulans near 49,000. Many of humanity's fledgling colonies had been snuffed out by the Romulans, and the Romulans themselves had lost many of their best and brightest in the conflict, and those who returned home vowed vengeance. The war ended nothing. Instead, it sowed the seeds of over 200 years of hatred. The Romulan Empire now had to come to terms with their defeat by a notionally inferior race, prompting them to disappear into a century of isolation. Meanwhile, humanity, while scarred, ultimately grew from the conflict and now emerged as a major power and cemented its commitment to peace and exploration, founding the United Federation of Planets, and Starfleet's motto was now vindicated. Ad Astra per Adversarum, to the stars despite adversity.